This is the new Ciceroni board from MoveX. It combines LoRaWAN and GPS capabilities in the compact Arduino MKR form factor. In this video, we're going to showcase the Ciceroni board's features, and we'll also create two projects using this board, a remote solar powered weather station and a long range asset tracker. So welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems showcase video, which today is sponsored by MoveX and their Ciceroni board. This board is intended as a development board targeting low power Internet of Things or IoT applications, such as remote sensing and tracking applications. With that being said, let's jump straight in and look at what features are on this board. At the center of everything is this MAMWLE module. This module contains the microcontroller and the supporting RF circuitry for the onboard LoRa radio. This is available as a standalone compact package with castellated pins or on this development board. The microcontroller uh, inside this device is the STM32WLE5J and the Ciceroni board uses the 48 kilobytes of RAM and 128 kilobytes of flash variant of this chip. Uh, other variants of the MAMWLE module or the MAMWLE module have more RAM and flash if you need that in your application. Uh, in this STM32 chip, there is a single core ARM Cortex N4 processor that is clocked at 48 MHz. The STM32 WLE series of chips do all have low power modes that are really helpful in battery powered applications. The onboard LoRa communication is provided by a Semtec SX1261 radio built into the STM32 chip, and it can communicate in the 868 MHz bands for Europe and 915 MHz bands for the US. This radio is connected to a UFL connector on the MAMWLE package. If you're interested in how LoRa and LoRaWAN works, take a look at our previous video, which is an intro into LoRa, um, in, which is in the cards now. In that video, we show you how to set up a LoRaWAN gateway and use the Things network. A big feature of this board is its onboard GPS and GNSS functionality, and this is provided by UBlocks Max M10S, which is a low power, high accuracy device, which is really useful in the use cases that the Ciceroni board is targeting, those low power applications. This chip also features UBlox's Cloud Connect feature, which is a way to significantly reduce the power consumption of a GPS chip. We discuss more about that in a bit later. Also on board is a LiPo battery connector with a standard LiPo JST. There is an onboard charging circuit that can provide just over 200 milliamps of charging current to the battery, and also an onboard red indicator LED to determine the charging status of the battery. The battery voltage can also be read and monitored by um, one of the ADC pins of the MAM WLE module. There is a green user LED and two user buttons, a reset button and a user programmable button. And in terms of programming, there are two ways you can program this board. You can use an ST-Link debugger through the ST-Link debug header on the board, or you can use the micro USB connector, which uses a CP2102N USB to UART bridge. And that allows you to use, um, to program the STM microcontroller over USB, maybe through something like the Arduino IDE. All of this comes in the Arduino MKR form factor, which specifically is 62.9, by 25 by 7.52 millimeters. I've been informed by MoveX that the reason why they used a micro USB connector is so that they conform to this MKR form factor. I will put the pin out on screen now so you can take a look if you're interested. And that pretty much covers the main specs of the board. And before I show you some projects with this board, I wonder if you already have some ideas in mind. Let us know down in the comments. Programming this board is easy with the Arduino IDE. All you need to do is add the board URL to the custom boards list and install it. You will also need to install the STM32 Cube Programmer. Um, you can get this directly from STM, um, and that allows the Arduino IDE to actually program the, the board. This board is available from the Arduino store for about 70 euros, as well as some other distributors such as Mauser or DigiKey. Those other distributors might be a better option for those that are not in the EU. On the surface, it might seem like a steep price, but I do think you get a fair amount for your money. If you think an, a, a Max M10S breakout GPS board from SparkFun runs over 40 quid um, or 40 euros. 
So as previously mentioned, we have two projects designed with the Ciceroni board, and there are write-ups with more detail on our website if you want to know more about the projects, and I'll link that down below. We're going to start with our remote solar-powered weather station, which is going to measure temperature, pressure, humidity, and light intensity. And to do this, we're going to pair the Ciceroni board with the Arduino MKR ENV shield, which contains all these sensors in a nice and simple breakout board. We're going to use this solar panel from RS components. I think this is a 1.5 watt panel, nothing special, but should be plenty for our use case. We also need a solar LiPo charger to allow us to charge the battery at the right voltage in the day and run the Ciceroni board from the battery when the solar power isn't uh, enough. This board from Primaroni also acts as a standard LiPo charger uh, via the USB-C connector. We plug the solar panel into one side and the battery into the other side. Our Ciceroni board is plugged into the load connector. I 3D printed this simple board which will allow me to mount the sensor to the outside of the solar panel. Now obviously this will be no use in the rain, but I want to see how this solar panel reacts to sunlight intensity. And I need the, the sensor as close to the solar panel as possible, and obviously you can't be behind it or put in a box. Um, once I understand how well this solar panel performs, for my long-term deployment, I think I'm going to simply put all the electronics into a Tupperware container with some ventilation holes in, behind the solar panel. I will update the written build guide with that. So I mounted the battery and the solar charger to the back of the solar panel using some double-sided tape, and left the antenna free so I could attach it via a zip tie to something sensible. I then mounted this outside, where I wanted to measure the weather, and left it there. In terms of the software that's running on the Ciceroni board, it's quite simple. I modified the end node example provided in the Ciceroni board library, and then added the Arduino Shield library I'm using. We set our LoRaWAN keys at the start of the program. Don't worry, I will be changing these. And then to set everything up, we initialized the environment shield, and then configure the LoRaWAN system by setting up the region, uh, implementing all our keys, and then we attempt to join the LoRaWAN network. We're joining the network I created in the previous video, our test application. The main loop of the program just runs the LoRa process over and over, which essentially does housekeeping, like checking if messages would be received, and our actual code is running in a user loop function we attached in the startup part of the code. This user loop function runs every 30 minutes, and when it isn't running, the board is put into low power mode, saving energy. When it does run, the script reads the environmental sensor data, turns it into a string, concatenates all the string values together, and sends it over LoRaWAN. I have a payload formatter on the Things network, which basically does the reverse of this, turning the strings back into float values, and then we use a webhook, which sends this data onwards to a dashboard on ThingSpeak, which makes it super easy to see the sense data in a graph. I'm pretty happy with this project. I mean, the next steps are going to be making sure the setup is a bit more water resistant once I'm happy with how well the solar panel is performing. Um, but I will update the written guide with how this goes. Next up, I decided to make an asset tracker to make use of the GPS functionality of the Ciceroni board. There are many use cases for an asset tracker, but I imagine this um, as a way to track my car if anyone nicked it. Although they probably would be doing me a favour. So I needed something a bit more discreet than my solar powered version, uh, so it wouldn't be so blatantly obvious. But then I decided to make something that's pretty blatantly obvious. But oh well, maybe it'll be a bit of a deterrent. So I decided to use a smaller antenna, forego the solar panel, and mount everything inside this 3D printed small box, which will fit on the phone uh, in my phone holder on my windshield. Um, the GPS does need RF line of sight to the sky. I mounted the GPS antenna at the at the top of the box, but don't worry, PLA plastic is RF transparent so um, it can still get a good signal. I did decide to keep the antenna poking out of the box. I'm not sure why, but as I said, maybe it'll be a deterrent. I mean, if someone broke into the car, the first thing they're gonna do is to take that off and chuck it outside, but. The code I'm running on this is pretty similar to the previous demo, but instead of the Maker Env library, we're using SparkFun's GNSS library to interface with the Ublox chip. In the user loop part of the code, the values of lat and long are read from the GPS chip, and then sent over LoRa to another ThingSpeak channel, which this time simply stores the points. Obviously, I'm not going to show you my actual GPS location at the moment, so I don't dox myself, 
Uh, this is just somewhere in the middle of London, but the values appear in the ThingSpeak channel. And then I wrote a simple JavaScript app to load the coordinates into a Google Maps pin. Um, if you do want to get rid of the development only note, then you just have to enable billing in the Google Cloud platform. But I didn't think that was needed for this demonstration. In terms of frequency, I decided to send a GPS signal approximately every 12 hours with a deep sleep between to conserve battery life. If I wanted to conserve even more battery, I could have used uBlocks' cloud locate functionality. And this is essentially a feature which uBlocks claims will achieve a 10 times reduction in power usage by essentially shortening the time to first fix, allowing the GPS device to only be on for a tiny amount of the time. It does this by not doing any of the position uh, calculations on the device itself, but instead offloading that via a small message to the cloud locate service located in, you guessed it, the cloud. It requires an uplink um, of between 12 and 50 bytes of data, depending on the resolution you want. So it seems perfect to pair this with the LoRa connectivity. So that's about all we have for this video. In the next one, we're going to show you how to easily add Wi-Fi to any Arduino Uno project using a drop-in ESP32 replacement BIP package. Make sure you're subscribed and get notified of that video. Thank you very much to MoveX for sponsoring this video make sure to check out the Ciceroni boards using the links in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day.